Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here, back again for another abstract painting video. Today we're going to be doing a beautiful oil abstract on a 12 by 24 inch canvas. Here is my palette going right to left. Thalo green, Prussian blue, Thalo blue, a big glob of soft mixing white there, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, permanent red, and down below of course two dollops of lemon yellow. At the very top in the canister we have the liquid white, same stuff that Bob Ross uses in his oil paintings. And over to the left in the tin can, we have a little bit of linseed oil, which will help us thin out our paints later on. Using the end of an older brush, we're gonna start with the liquid white. It's a great medium for painting. It allows us to blend colors very easily on the canvas, and it saves me a lot of time. Especially if you're doing oil paintings like this, I highly recommend getting a little can of it. Not very expensive. Bob Ross Company puts it out and you can get some of it. It's very, very simple to use. I'm not doing a Bob Ross style painting at all today. I'm doing an abstract, but it's a really nice medium and I highly recommend checking it out. If you haven't used it before, I really like it. I'm just using the end of an older brush, like I said, and I'm just gonna be using the wooden part, just stirring it up and then putting it right onto the canvas. We're gonna start out here using a one inch brush. We're gonna smooth it out. And then right after that, without cleaning my brush, I'm going to go on and grab some Prussian blue and cover the right half of my canvas. I'm looking for a fairly even coverage with this liquid white as I'm painting it here. So when you're putting it on, I want to make sure that I have the upper two-thirds of my canvas covered, particularly on the right-hand side, because that's where I'm going to be putting that Prussian blue in just a moment. This is titled Coral Reef 2, this piece. And it is a play on or a continuation of my Coral Reef series. If you've seen my first painting, Coral Reef, my first abstract that I did last week, you'll see that this is a very similar composition because I'm exploring this idea further. I like the overall approach I had last week, but one of the downfalls of that painting, I thought, was that it darkened a little bit too much. It didn't quite have the pop of color, the very bright red that I was really looking for, so I switched out from using that nymphal red to a brighter permanent red, and I'm hoping that that will give me the effect that I'm actually going for and what I had in my head at the time. Not to say the last composition was bad or I didn't like the actual piece. Actually, there's lots of really good points about the last composition. I felt like there was more to do and more that could be done with this piece. Why not make a series out of it and do a couple more of these coral reefs? because they were just so much fun to do. I just love painting abstracts. They're very free, they're very loose, you can be relaxed, you can put some paint on the canvas and just explore the act and the art of painting. If you've never painted before, please grab a brush, join me, try painting a piece similar to this. By all means, I don't mind if you copy, just be aware that you're not allowed to sell it commercially, of course, because that would be breaking copyright law, but I don't mind if you want to try it out and to do something similar to what I'm doing, by all means, please do so. That's why I put in all the colors that I'm using, so that way you can pick up on some of the techniques, combinations that I like, and hopefully it will further you in your process of learning painting. Okay, I've transitioned here to the Prussian blue. I'm gonna add a bit more of the liquid white. I really want this to be a very light, almost a sky blue. I don't want it to be too dark. I really, really didn't like how dark it went in the last one, so we're gonna really bring it up a notch and try to be a bit more aggressive with the white in this composition. I'm using a lot of diagonal strokes for this because I want it to simulate light kind of coming through from above through the waves and at some sort of angle so that is the purpose of all these diagonal strokes also i'm trying to grab the darker color from the outside and blend it naturally into the lighter color it's just a neat effect to have a lot of strokes in one direction and that's a technique and an idea that i have not explored quite as much brush directionality is very important 
but I've got a little bit of the Prussian blue here and go a little bit stronger with it. As I'm looking at it, I also realize I put a bit of the phthalo blue into that color. So it's not pure Prussian, it's a touch of the phthalo blue. And I wanted to blue it up a little bit more. Phthalo blue is a great, great color. Looking good, moving along very nicely. Now I want to point out that the bottom of this canvas is a little bit cut off. You're going to see almost all of it. It's just the bottom, like an eighth, that is not quite there. So just be aware of that, that there is a little bit you're not quite seeing. I did my best to be not too far from the canvas, but to kind of get the whole thing. But if I got the whole thing, it felt like it was too far back, so you couldn't really see what I was doing. So it was kind of a happy medium between getting as much as I could on the camera and making sure that I was not too close or not too far. I'm adding some phthalo green here. It's a beautiful beautiful color i really love it and that was one of the things that compelled me to try again with this piece is to really push that phthalo green so so lovely so i'm going to bring in that phthalo green and let it dance and play in and amongst that lighter blue just beautiful very sea sea green very deep very beautiful I'm just doing kind of a tapping motion and just trying to make it very diffused i don't want it to be too active in terms of brush strokes i want it to be very free and light when I'm doing this, I'm just using a very light touch, bringing a little bit more of that blue in there and sort of commingling the two together to get a nice gradient. Darker phthalo green into the phthalo blue into the Prussian blue. This is the fun stuff. Grabbing some of that bright, permanent red pure right off my palette and slapping it on there. Oh, so much fun. I can't tell you. I hope that you're painting right now along with me because it is a joy and a blast to put all that electric color straight onto the canvas. So much fun. Pure, bright red. And I'm thinking mostly streaks going outward. This is a coral reef and there's lots of little, I don't know what you call them, fingerlings or something like that. Little uh, parts that sort of stretch out beyond the actual bulk of the coral and it reaches out from those base rocks and it stretches outward so we want to have lots of little I don't know trailing things there's probably a technical term that I just don't know overall I'm just trying to simulate sort of a look and appearance of side of a kind of a cliff underneath the water just jam-packed with beautiful corals just reaching out into the waves bringing in a bit of the alizarin crimson in just a moment first I have more of the red and then that's starting to mix a little bit forming kind of a purple with the already the blue I have on there. As you can see the composition is starting to take shape. I have almost an equal slice down the middle, maybe a little bit to the left more of the red and then as it kind of gets to the bottom the red starts to jut out and become more present in the composition. So that way you have some movement. You want the viewer's eye to kind of travel either up or down the painting. Anything that's kind of protruding outward is going to catch more light. So I need to make sure that when I'm going back, like here on this large protrusion, that we're going to have some vibrant, pure lemon yellow in a minute that I'll bring in more of. I'm going to do a slightly different technique here. I've grabbed my palette knife and I'm just very lightly putting just a smidgen of lemon yellow right onto that blue. Of course, blue and yellow make green. So we're gonna have this nice greeny bluish yellow cast. And I'm gonna just do some nice strokes straight upwards, fairly lightly to get some streaks. It's almost like there's some light dancing behind for our rock face and our coral face here. And it's also sort of like these other, maybe little smaller algae or something like that is reaching out. Now I did say it's an abstract and it is for all the purposes conceived or thought of it as an abstract. I know I'm using lots of descriptive words like coral reef and actually the last piece I did was pure abstract and then I decided to title it that way. In this one, I'm actually going after the look of a real coral reef even more. Okay, here comes that yellow. I talked about already how the protrusions need to have some pop of color so it grabs the viewer's eye. And here is me doing that and trying to capture that 
that look of the light hitting it. And that brighter yellow is a nice contrast to both the blue and the red underneath. Gonna come back in here and put some more of that permanent red. I want the red to be a smack in the face. It's gotta be bold, bright, and absolutely beautiful. So when we're doing the red, I'm not being shy about it at all. Pure red on the canvas, just gorgeous. Taking a dry brush here, this is a fan brush. I'm just kind of blending that green a little bit more so it's more diffused. I may go back later and add a bit more of the yellow so it's more of a pop of yellow, but for right now, we want that lighter lemony blue green to be more distant, sort of like a halo effect, not too overbearing or present in the composition. A little bit more blending, and we're doing pretty good. It's coming together pretty nicely. Okay, I'm gonna grab some of this yellow, and I'm gonna first do a kind of a line straight down across the top of that protrusion, and then I'm going to take the knife and I'm gonna flick it upwards. You'll see me do that in a minute and it's going to create a sort of staggered and jagged look, which is gonna be perfect for how it actually looks in the ocean. Quick little strokes here, just diagonal little strokes. Very, very light touch. You need a feather touch to do this, not a very heavy touch, but a very quick, light approach. I know I'm going fast, but I'm barely touching the canvas. I have found from experience that if you push very hard with a knife. You're gonna get a kind of a streak and it may commingle and sort of blend together with the things that are underneath. But if you're very light with it, the paint will break and it will look a lot better overall, I think. Going back in here with some of the alizarin crimson and just putting in a few spots. I'm using this crimson sort of as a contrast color. Crimson is naturally more in the blue family than it is in the red family. It's a cooler color than a hot color. So I'm using that really to push in and put in some darker colors overall. And I'm really gonna bring more of that in as I go along. Just a dash of raw sienna, beautiful little orange color, kind of a burnt orange. Okay, and a bit more of the alizarin crimson. I want these protrusions back here to a little bit higher so that the red is more dominant in the bottom half and it creates a nice movement a curve a half arch from the top down across the bottom Time to play around here a little bit, grabbing some of that lemon yellow, and I'm gonna bring that a little bit forward in that one spot. Just felt like it needed more in that area. I'm gonna keep adding in layers. This is all about layering one color, kind of overlapping another, and having some darker spots and some lighter spots. I'm gonna put a few highlights on these back, further distant corals. Just a few, just so they can see that they're protruding upward and catching the light. Back to that permanent red, just gonna bring up the heat in this one spot right here. Oh yeah, that's looking a lot better. I'm using a lot of the palette knife today, and on watching this video, because I record them, I just record it, I don't say anything, and then I do the talking afterwards and record that later. I didn't realize quite how much of the knife I used in this piece. I was just kind of painting and wasn't really thinking about that. But I did use a lot of it, so this is a very knife intensive. Now, beginners sometimes are intimidated by using a knife like that. It's kind of awkward and you're not used to doing it. So just take some practice. If you want, grab a little cheap canvas board and just play around with the knife. You do an abstract and just do the whole thing with your palette knife. Get used to pressing hard and pressing lightly and changing the angle, maybe using the small part of the knife rather than the long edge. How do you load a palette knife? It's very simple. Just take some paint on your palette. You're going to pull it straight downward so you get a kind of a nice smear. And you're going to take and at an angle, you're going to cut straight across it and it will give a nice little roll of paint on the end. And then with that roll of paint, you can do some marvelous, beautiful things with your knife. It's all about control, but 
At the same time, whenever I do knife work, I can't perfectly control where everything goes. And that's one of the things I love about using a palette knife is that it, it's a little bit spontaneous and that adds a nice appearance to my composition and to my paintings overall. I added a bit more of the raw sienna while I was talking and I'm going to go back in here with some more permanent red. Now, the upper half looks great. That's why I'm not messing with it too much. It mostly looks like what I want it to be. I'm struggling a little bit with the bottom part of this composition, and over time I do start to figure it out and decide to go with some smaller little corals kind of peeking up and kind of overlapping each other, some brighter colors as well. It took me a little bit to figure all that out, so have patience with me. I do these in real time, and I don't always plan everything out before I begin. Actually, I rarely do that. I like to be spontaneous and in the moment. That's why I'm calling this an abstract, because it is very free. It is very intuitive. It's very personal for me. I'm not overthinking it at all, and it's very in the moment. I'm going to come in here with some Prussian blue and some soft mixing white and just fill in this one spot at the top. Now, I have a little bit of a clip that works on my easel, and I don't know if you noticed, and if you watch my videos, you may have seen that about halfway through a painting, I'll remove the clip for a minute so that way I can paint underneath it and sort of get the top of the canvas covered correctly. Uh, once I get most of the big brush work done where the canvas is filled, I'm just doing some more delicate work with the knife. I don't need the extra support of that clip, so that way I can take it off and I'll be good to go. Okay, really pushing this beautiful lemony green color. How did I create that color? It's very simple. It's lemon yellow and phthalo green. Those two colors mixed together, more yellow than green of course, and you get that beautiful kind of limey green. So lovely. I felt like I needed a really a burst of color down at the bottom. Now I'm going to cover some of this up so it won't be quite as present in the composition, but it's definitely there and it sort of holds that whole bottom section and anchors it for me in my composition. Now the shape is not quite right and I'm going to work on that as I go along. You'll see me take away some paint, put a little bit back, but overall the color's right and that's really important. I felt like something was lacking up here and I realized the top yellow needs to start translating down lower in the composition. So I'm going to put a few little tendrils of the lemon yellow here. It's going to really help pull this top area down further into the bottom. You almost can imagine that as things get lower, they're going to get a little bit darker. And by darker, I mean a little bit bluer. You can kind of imagine that that bottom lemony green, that lime green, is actually the same as up above. It's just a little bit lower and more shadows. There's more blue in it. When I add more blue to yellow, you get more of a green. That's one way to think about it. A little bit of yellow there, a few pops of it. Okay, back to my favorite color of all. Anyone who watches me knows that when I'm painting, this is my favorite color, and that is alizarin crimson. I want to also show you a really cool technique. I'm going to just take a little bit of paint on the brush, a little bit of paint, and use the lightest touch possible, a nice light feather touch, and I'm going to create some distant shadowy corals reaching out from behind. It's going to create some more depth. So I'm being very very light with this approach and with this touch using my brush very lightly. You can just barely see them back there and that's exactly what I want. They shouldn't be too present in the composition. They need to just barely be there and when you get closer to it and you see the real painting you can really see that they are adding a nice bit of depth. Okay, I'm going to fix the side here. It needs some permanent red to pull that side so it's not just that glaring white, but it, it's painted all the way around the corner there. So I'm just going to fix that real quick. I'm going to use a little bit of the alizarin crimson at the bottom just because it's getting darker. And as I said before, alizarin crimson is a little bit cooler of a color and it will cool off for me. Using a very, very thin 
brush there. So it's a little round brush and it works pretty well. And I'm just trying to get that filled in real quick. Again, um, as we go further on, I'm gonna make some more changes to the bottom of this canvas. So some of it may be a little bit off camera. I apologize for that, but most of this composition is on camera and you get to see almost everything that I'm doing. A few more touches of alizarin crimson here, looking great overall. I'm very excited. I'm using just a standard touch with this. I'm not pressing too hard or too light and just filling in a few spots so it looks right. I'm trying to vary that red a little bit with the alizarin crimson. Got a bit of the yellow here with this round brush. I'm gonna put that around the corner as well. You can't see it, but it's there. I think I had mentioned earlier that I was going to bring in a little bit more yellow into this halo effect that I liked. And so I'm doing that right now with my knife. Just a little bit of paint on the knife and then scraping pretty hard straight outward trying to blend it together. We are nearly done, just a few more moments, and we will be complete with this abstract slash uh, coral reef. A bigger round brush here, just gonna blend in. This is a dry brush, just gonna blend in a few spots. Grab my palette knife and get back to work here. Wanted something else right there, so put on in a little bit more of the orangey yellow. This is a mixture of permanent red, lemon yellow, and raw sienna. It's a nice zing of color. Nice orange, and that's going to pull the top part more into the bottom of the composition. The bright yellow down lower. And like I said, some of it's off camera, but I'm putting in some smaller corals with the same technique as before. This is where I get bold. Thalo blue and mixing white. I'm going to put a blue coral right there on the bottom corner. Now, you'll get to see more of it in a moment because I'm gonna bring it upward. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the permanent red, lemon yellow, and raw sienna, that orange mixture, and put a few more spots down below. I'm gonna take out some of the excess of that orange, got a little bit thick with it. I want it to be more of a pop a small accent than it to be so dominant. Really gonna push that deeper lizard crimson there. Wanted that to be a little bit more present. Okay, here's that blue, white, and a touch of the phthalo green. Gonna be very bold, very dramatic. Realistic? I don't know. I just thought it was cool. And that's, again, one of the beauties of painting, and particularly painting an abstract, is there's no rules. You really can paint whatever you feel like in that moment. If you want a hot pink coral, then put it in there. Whatever colors that make you happy and you enjoy doing. Because ultimately, and this, I truly believe this, ultimately, painting should be so much fun. If you're not having fun when you're painting, then try something new. Shake it up. You should always be exciting. Just a new experience, really. That's how I like to live, and that's how I like to paint. Okay, bringing in a little bit of this green into the red. Green against red, they're opposites, and they're going to pop. So the green will really shine, and the red will also really shine. So playing green against red where you can is a good idea. Now, if you're doing it in a landscape, and you're going to put the bright red, green, uh, it may not work as well, unless of course you're doing like, I don't know, red tulips in a field that could work. But be careful with that. But if you're doing an abstract like this, playing the green against the red, it's a great idea. A bit more of the red here. I really want that red to zing in that bottom corner there. And I'm also trying to create some layers of pushing that big red 
coral up above that lighter yellow one that's in the middle there. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching. If you would please share this video with those that you know on social media, I would greatly appreciate it. I thank you so much for stopping by today and watching me paint. I'm going to cut away in just a moment here and show you the whole composition in a better light as well. And you get to see the final painting. Here it comes. Be sure to check out my studio art blog. That's impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com. You can buy my artwork on Etsy at etsy.com slash shop slash impulsive artistry. And please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks!